morning, good morning. I'm going to call my husband up, my other son, and the Nelson family. Come on up. Well, I'm so glad you guys are here because the day did turn good. I know this morning we were kind of like, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to go. You can sit down, Nelson, please. All right, so I have a question for you guys. How do we influence kids and the teenagers as they grow in their relationship with Jesus? How do we influence our youth when they grow up and they graduate, they leave us, they go to college, so that they will have an authentic faith with Jesus? How do we do that? How do we influence our volunteers and leaders to be here to make a difference in the kids' and the teens' lives with the schedules that we have and our life that is and all that? Well, let me talk. We have two groups here. We have one group right here. I'm going to use Sean to represent one. Sorry about that. He is representing the church. We're going to call that yellow. That's yellow there. The, the water is kind of yellow here. We're going to use pretend. Do you want to be the holder? Okay. And this is the home. The home is love. Love is where they take care, they nurture. When you take care of the light, you shine the light from the church. We're shining Jesus out to the community, to the people. But we also have at home, these are the people that love these kids. You spend more time at least at least three, we'll say it's 3,000 hours of quality time a year. I think it's a year. <laughs> what is me? I forgot. With the kids. I mean, if you think about it, they're sleeping and stuff and schedules. We at the church, we only really have about 40 hours with our kids. That's it. But when we combine together, when we combine together, I'm four years in here. We take the love of the family and... Not like my one last time. We get orange. We get kind of an orange together. So the curriculum that I'm using down with the kids is called orange because the idea of it is that together, actually, I'll have you hold this one now. Yeah, thank you. We have a greater impact on kids when we work together, not when you're on your own doing your own thing, not when we're on our own doing our own thing. It's when we're working together as a team. We have the greatest impact upon our kids and will make a difference in their life. That's why we say two combined influences made a greater impact and than they would all alone. We want kids to have a better future, and that's why we take our cues from what Jesus said. Jesus said when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And he wants us to love our neighbor. He wants us to love. We want to teach these things to our kids. So when they learn to love God, when we work together to impact them, when they learn to love God, it will influence their future amazingly. When they love God, they will make wiser choices with what they do. When they love God, it will lead them into stronger relationships and helping them, help them to point people back to God. And when they love God, it will lead them to a deeper faith and the love God and people will see that difference that's in them. So here at the church, we can't do it alone. There's only, there's only a few of us. We need people to be here to align with us. We need to work together to have the heart of God so that we can talk the same language, teaching kids about Jesus, how much he loves you, the core truths of how to love one another, how to love your family, and how to love the greater people. So when everybody is together, we teach kids to love God, love life, and to love others. And isn't that what it's about? That's what Jesus told us, to love God, love life, and love the others. Because you love God so much, it just happens to pour out over into everybody around you. So that's what we're into in the children's ministry and in the youth ministry. And we'd love to have you guys be a part of it to influence kids for the future. Thank you. Let's give a hand to the people that came up when I asked them at the last moment. <laughs> Super. Thank you, Cindy, Sean, the Nelson family. God bless you.
Well, good morning again, everyone, and welcome to Christ Church on this kickoff Sunday. I decided to wear my Adam Thielen jersey today and the new hat I picked up this summer over in Wisconsin. How is that for a slap in the face, right? And I wore it because, of course, this is the first time in history that the Vikings are playing the Packers on kickoff Sunday of the NFL season. How about that? But I'm really here to encourage you with a different spirit this morning, and that is the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad to see each of you today, and I can tell you with full confidence that this is going to be a great year of growth at Christ Church. Why? Because God is faithful, and the Bible says He will do it. And yet, what a powerful thing to know that He chooses to do it through each of us. You know, it happens every, every spring. Monarch butterflies return hundreds of miles from Mexico. They lay their eggs on milkweed leaves. Larvae or caterpillars are born, and they eat and grow and molt and eat and grow and molt, and pretty soon they form a chrysalis or a cocoon. And a couple of weeks later, something amazing happens. A new monarch butterfly emerges. It's one of the real miracles in nature, isn't it? And I think it's one of the most profound illustrations of transformation. Friends, the title of our new fall series at CCO is Emerge Stronger with Jesus. As we all know, uh, last spring, about the time that those caterpillars were first cocooning, a virus called COVID-19 hit our country, indeed the whole world, and we were all told to cocoon in our homes. Stay-at-home orders, they were called. We did, and with countless other restrictions added, the world seemed to change literally overnight. The question now, six months later, is when we emerge from all of this, just what kind of people will we be? How will we have been transformed? During the next seven Sundays, I want to explore that question with you. Because I believe that God has big plans for the church, for Christ's church, and for each of us if we will just listen to God and not the fear and the lies of this world. Last winter, before all of this began, I shared a a message called 2020 Vision. Do you remember? Actually, we did a whole series. We declared in faith that this year, 2020, would be a significant year of, of vision and growth and action for the church of Jesus Christ, and we were not alone. Many other Christian pastors, leaders, and prophets all over the world were seeing this too. Little did we know just what calamity 2020 would bring. Little did we know how we would be tested and what God would choose to teach us. Last spring, about a month after all of this began, I shared another message called, What Will Be the New Normal? There are, I think right now, about 70,000 views on Facebook of that message. In it, I strongly suggested that the new normal would be anything but a return to the old. Why? Because we serve a God who makes all things new. And that's why I believe that we must always be asking, what is God doing right now in the midst of this historically challenging time, and how might he like us to emerge out the other side? You know, God often speaks to me while I'm on vacation. I've wondered why that is at times, but I think it's because as I get away, I'm able to wind down a little bit and refocus a little bit and kind of get that 10,000-foot view of things again. We all experience that, I think. Well, this past July, while Colleen and I were camping over near Minocqua, Wisconsin, I was asking the Holy Spirit for a fresh word for Christ Church. When I was least expecting it, he dropped this word into my heart, this word emerge. It wasn't even close to being on my radar at the time. 
I looked it up for starters, and here's what the dictionary said. To emerge is to move out of or away from something and come into view. Here's an example of how it might be used in a sentence even this morning. As she emerged from the fog, I could finally see her clearly. So I asked the Lord, what is it that you want us to move out of, to move away from? In other words, what are the things that are holding us back, keeping us in a spiritual fog? What do you want to come into view, into greater focus in our lives so that we can represent you more faithfully to the world? The next definition of emerge said, to emerge is to become important or prominent. Here's an example again. Because of the vision and values he expressed, he emerged as a clear choice for the job. I asked the Lord, what do you want to raise up to a greater level of importance and prominence in our lives and at CCO, again, for the sake of our witness to the world? After all, didn't Jesus say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven? I asked, Lord, are we, are we shining? I asked, Lord, are people seeing? And then the third definition said, to emerge is when facts or circumstances become clearly known. Here's an, an example again used in a sentence. When she finally got the facts, the real story emerged and there was no debating it. I asked the Lord, how have our circumstances during these past months brought to light or revealed what is really true, what is really important in life, and how might this change the way we think and act as we go forward? So I did a lot of thinking and praying and studying about this word emerge in preparation for this series. As I did, the Holy Spirit began to teach me and show me how we can all emerge from this crisis stronger with Jesus, not in spite of COVID and all the other issues of the day, but because of what the Lord wants to teach us right now in the midst of these circumstances. But friends, new revelation comes with a price. Spiritual insights aren't cheap. There must be an urgency on our part to hear from the Lord. Do you come this morning with that desire in your heart? You see, if you truly want 2020 vision, meaning to see the world as God sees it, if we truly want to emerge from these unprecedented times and move into the new normal that God is preparing, we have got to not only open our eyes, but in many cases, retrain a lazy eye. Let me explain what I mean. A fellow pastor and medical doctor named Tim Dunnett from Sunderland in the United Kingdom shared this following illustration on one of our Global Transform Our World conference calls. It really spoke to me, so I'm going to share it with you this morning and then expand on it a little bit. If you have a child with a lazy eye, it means that the muscles around that eye aren't working in tandem with the good eye, and that lazy eye tends to drift, right? My daughter Sarah had this condition when she was a little girl. And what happens is that, that the neurons from the brain begin to track to that one good eye and the brain effectively cuts off the lazy eye. This leads to limited vision in that weaker eye along with diminishing peripheral vision and depth perception. But long before surgery is considered an option, a standard practice is to cover the good eye with a patch, you know, for just a period of time and force that lazy eye to begin to strengthen itself. And most kids will fight it because at first they can't see very well with their lazy eye. But over a period of time, the muscles begin to work again. The neurons begin to flow. 
vision improves and gradually both eyes can be retrained to work together again properly. And isn't it true, both eyes are really needed in order to have 20-20 vision. Now, friends, I would suggest that this is exactly what's happening in the church today. And I'm talking about the whole church, not just CCO. COVID-19 has effectively been used by God to put a patch over our good eye, meaning the eye with which we have seen and understood the church in the past. When things shut down back in March, I mean, church buildings were closed. Worship services were forced online. Weddings and funerals were canceled. Programs were canceled. Bible studies and youth ministries and mission trips were canceled. Just about everything was canceled. And many of us have been kicking and screaming every step of the way. I'm not going to get into the politics of it all right now, but I do want to share what I've observed. I believe that God has been using this time to strengthen our lazy eye, the eye that must get stronger and come into alignment if we are to see God's plans and purposes with 2020 vision. You know, our tendency is to try to pull that patch off and go back to what we have known, the church, as it's always been. But I believe that the Holy Spirit is pleading with us today to not miss this opportunity to receive new vision and renewed vision for such a time as this. So I want us all to work the, the muscles around our lazy eye today and in the weeks to come. And I, I want to begin this morning by asking you to consider three key words that are important in this strengthening process. And the first is challenges. Say it with me. Challenges. Have, has anybody here had some challenges thrown at you recently? Well, this, uh, this Vikings football is going to represent challenges, and I'm going to throw it out here, and somebody can catch it, because I'll bet we've all been dealing with challenges. <laughs> he dropped it just like I would have. That's what we do with challenges sometimes, isn't it? We drop the ball. What challenges have you been facing? I don't know anybody in our immediate congregation that's had COVID-19, but most of you know someone who has, and some of you have lost friends or co-workers or loved ones to this terrible virus. My heart goes out to you. Some of you have also lost jobs or had your hours cut back or had your businesses affected and are continuing to deal with financial hardship. Others have dealt with pressures at home, pressures in your marriage, and the challenge of kids and school and schedules and life just totally upended. You've all been doing your best, but let's face it, it hasn't been easy. Add to that racial turmoil, protests, and violence in the streets, and the political tension of an election season, and this has been quite a year. As Christians... How do we respond? Well, for starters, isn't it so important to remember key Bible promises? Like, for example, Romans 8.28, where it says that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Yes, friends, let's remember that God is working in our lives even when we can't see him even as we face great challenges as his children, as a church, and as a nation. Let's not forget that. When you're a follower of Jesus, every setback is a setup for what God wants to do next in your life. Do you understand that? The Holy Spirit is at work in the midst of our circumstances right now, desiring to draw us closer, build us in faith, and teach us important life lessons. But we have to tune in, not tune out. How have you seen God at work in your life during these past six months? You know, it's easy to get down in the dumps when things aren't going your way. We know that many are dealing with anxiety and fear, with depression. But instead of getting pulled down, 
we've got to look up in the spirit of Psalm 24, verses 7 and 8. There it says, lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. This is a battle. But with Jesus, you're on the winning team. The King of glory is on your side. He's entering into every situation and is strong and mighty to save. Instead of giving in to fear and discouragement, look up to God and ask for his help. But also ask, what are you trying to teach me, Lord, in the midst of it all? We've got to ask God to help us emerge stronger with Jesus who has promised to be with us always. You know, these past months have certainly been challenging for Christ Church as well. I don't think that any of us has ever experienced anything quite like this. But you know what? It's also been a significant time of, of learning to rely on God more than ever, getting creative and thinking outside the box. We've tried to do that here through the spring and summer with online worship, with outdoor worship, with midweek video updates and more. And in the process of trying something new, God surprised us. And in some cases, we reached thousands of more people with worship and messages than we would normally do on a Sunday morning. Some of you are watching online right now, and to you we say, welcome. And yes, friends, God's has, God has been taking us deeper, at least those of us who've been willing to go. Our teaching on the ecclesia, that Greek word for the church, has in many ways become a deeper reality. How has that happened? Well, because we haven't been able to meet here, but we've been meeting in our homes. Those who've been doing that faithfully and sincerely have truly discovered that promise that wherever two or three gather together in Jesus' name, he is there in our midst. We've discovered that the church can happen in our homes and offices, in our cars and cabins, and even when we're on vacation. Yes, we've missed the fellowship of the body, that's for sure. But in this process, God has been strengthening our lazy eye in order to give us a clearer understanding of the church. When we walk with Jesus, setbacks become setups and challenges become opportunities to worship and serve Jesus in new ways. The second C word that I want to lift up today is connections. And let me see if I can connect again with somebody else here with the pass. <laughs> I almost hit somebody in the head. I'm not a quarterback. I'm really a lineman. You can tell that. You know, Connections is such an important word because the church is about people, people who are seeking God, people who are serving God, people who are intentionally choosing God. In my reading, I discovered something really interesting. In philosophy, systems theory, in science and art, emergence occurs when an entity is observed to have properties that its parts do not have on their own. These properties emerge into something greater only when the parts, like people and resources, systems and organizations, come together and interact as a whole. This is so true of the church, isn't it? It's good to know, as we've said, that the ecclesia exists wherever two or three gather in Jesus' name, and he is in our midst. However, what a blessing when six or eight or ten gather for a small group. When 20 or 30 gather for a kids' ministry or a youth ministry event. When 100 or 200 or 500 gather for a worship service. Because then it, it's that all of our individual personalities and gifts and abilities emerge into something greater than we are on our own. In the church, we call it the body of Christ, the family of God. And imperfect as we are, what a blessing 
it is. In the process of being and becoming the church, unity is such a key. Unity of vision and purpose and a blending of gifts and abilities that give legs to our mission. Connections, so important as we share life together. We celebrated a wedding here yesterday between Tom Mackey, who grew up here at Christ Church, and his bride, Hillary Hutner. It was wonderful, and our congratulations and prayers go with them. Did you know that the Bible says that the church is like the bride, and Jesus is like the bridegroom? And there is a, a marriage here between Jesus and us that God intends to be a blessing to the world. Just like Tom and Hillary yesterday, we are called to pledge our love first to Jesus and then for one another, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for the rest of our lives. You're right, all of your years may not be lived out here at Christ Church, but they should be lived out with a loving commitment to Jesus' church and to those who are a part of it. All of this to say, we're connected, we're in this together, and what we have been given is worth fighting for. In Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul gives us an important word of encouragement. You know, he was jailed at the time that he wrote this letter simply for sharing the gospel. But he wrote, as a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. What does that say to you this morning? You know, it's a reminder to me that the unity of heart and mind and purpose that God desires us to have takes work. The reality is that most of us have been physically separated and even isolated during these past months, and we need to get reconnected. That's why we're putting a special emphasis on connecting this fall through some form of small group. It might be in person through our preschool, our kids' ministry, our youth ministry, or an adult small group. Pastor Sean will say more about some opportunities we have in place a little bit later. It might be online if you're more comfortable with that. But friends, it's time that we get reconnected as a congregation because deep connections, deep relationships are key for a growing church. When it comes to this word connections, maybe our lazy eye represents the fact that so many of us walk in and out on a Sunday morning and never really get connected in a personal way beyond that. I know that God would love to strengthen the muscles of our lazy eye in this area, that we would see the importance of this. I know that it's that personal connection that for so many leads to such blessing when life is shared together during both good times and during those of pain and struggle. So I really want to encourage you to get connected here at CCO this fall. And then the third word today, just briefly, is calling. I want somebody to call for this third ball here, and I'm going to try to get it to you. Who thinks they could catch it? Hey, way to go. All right, all right. Here's what I want you to know about this word, calling. If you love the Lord and your life is committed to Jesus, friends, hear this. There is a calling upon your life to be his witness in this world. This isn't something just for pastors, for staff, for church leaders. This is a call that God has placed on each of our lives. You know, one thing that the Lord has shown us during these past six months is that there are so many people out there who've been tuning in, listening to our services and messages, but are not connected to a church home like Christ Church. 
to those listening today, I say to you, we invite you to come and be a part of this church family. Come. I want to be your pastor. Come. We want to be your friends. We welcome you to our fellowship. Come and experience what it's like to be a part of a supportive community of Christian believers who are on a faith journey just like you. Not perfect, but asking Jesus to show us the way forward. We will meet you right where you're at. You know, ultimately, people, it's about each of us recognizing our personal calling to implement that lifestyle of prayer evangelism as we've talked about it so many times. That in this world right now, we would begin by speaking peace and blessing, not giving curses. We would begin by building relationships that are sincere and honest and open up good conversations, not isolating from others, especially those that don't know the Lord. That we would be open to responding with the gifts and abilities God has given us to the felt needs of people, those needs that right now feel most important to them because in the process, God will show us how to minister to the deeper needs in Jesus' name. And then we have that wonderful privilege in that context of sharing our story. And God has given every one of you a story of how you've experienced his love and what that has meant in your life. And when your story intersects with God's story, it becomes a witness that touches people's hearts. When we commit to do his will and not our own, he will strengthen our lazy eye and help it focus on that neighbor or coworker, that classmate or friend who's hurting right now and really needs Jesus. He will show us how to make a difference in people's lives. Remember, God is faithful. The Bible says he will do it, but he has also chosen to do it through us. I see it in society today, and I'll bet you do too. There is an open door right now into people's lives everywhere who are hurting and searching for love and truth and meaning. They're not finding it in what the world offers. They can find it in Jesus, and they should find it in the church, including right here. But I do not believe that this open door will last forever. This is such an important time for Christians like you and I to stand up and to be counted. There will be persecution along the way. We see it happening everywhere already. But our God is so faithful. He will give us the strength and the courage and the vision and the initiative to be witnesses for him. Because guess what? He's already won the victory. So as we begin this new series, Emerge, will you pray about these three words with me and consider how they are already touching your life. Challenges. We've all got them. The question is, how will we respond to them? Will we take it with our own strength and ability, or will we learn to rely on God and ask him, Lord, what is it you want to teach me right now in the midst of the challenges I'm dealing with? Connections. Will we get connected at a deeper level that we can all begin growing again in our faith? and building those relationships, and being motivated to meet, uh, reach out and form relationships with others. And then that sense of calling, that today would be an opportunity for each of us to renew that call that we've been given in Jesus Christ to go in his name, to let our light shine, to represent him to the world. What a privilege and what a responsibility. Challenges, connections, and calling. Three words that are very important in that process of strengthening the lazy eye that we might see the church in a new light. So ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you right now where you are truly at in your relationship with Him. If you've been away in body, soul, or spirit, if you've checked out, so to speak, friends, it's time to come home. Kickoff Sunday always provides us with an opportunity for a new beginning, and so does our Lord. And that's what I want for each of you. Life is full of change and challenges.
But I believe that each of us can emerge stronger with Jesus, with 2020 vision, and both eyes working properly and wide open to God's amazing plan for our lives. Here we go. Let's go together. Would you please stand and join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you today for this church family, for these friends, old and new, Lord, at all different places in their walk with you. But I ask you to infuse in them today, anoint them afresh with the power of your Holy Spirit, a deep desire to hear your voice and to walk in your ways, to renew in faith for such a time as this. Lord, we lift up our Christ Church congregation today. Yes, we've been meeting in a different way, but we've still been the church. We've been scattered a bit, but Lord, the connection in our hearts has never wavered. And so now, Lord, as we begin to emerge from this time into that new normal that you are creating, that you're preparing, Lord, touch us with your spirit. Open our eyes to see. Strengthen that lazy eye that we might truly move ahead with 2020 vision. I ask your blessing on each of our ministries this fall, but especially, Lord, I ask your blessing on each of our families and each of those individuals here today. And if there's someone here this morning that has never before put their trust in Jesus, I just encourage you to do that right now. Just say to God, God, I, I hear you. I know that you love me. I confess my sin. I receive you into my heart. And I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior today. And I can assure you that God hears your prayer. That he will fill you with his spirit. And set you on the course of a brand new beginning. And life will never be the same again. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We're so honored to be your children to be a part of your family. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to celebrate Holy Communion together, which also is not only an act of forgiveness and, and just acknowledging what Jesus did for us, but it's also an act of unity as believers all over the world celebrate this great act, this sacrament. And so we'll do that together this morning. Um, we're using these. So if you do not have one of these to, to do communion, would you please raise your hand and ushers will bring those around. Is there anybody that needs one of these? Stick your hand in the air. All right. Before we do the words of institution, I'll just do a little instruction here. This is a YouTube video. You just don't know it. So there's a little flip deal. It's like a coffee creamer. You pull that back, but there's two layers to it, and mine just failed, so uh, be prepared for that. One exposes the wafer. The other exposes the wine, and uh, this one just exposed the wine, so I'll probably just have to heat the tin foil as well. Uh, just dig at it for a little bit, and it will expose the wafer. So just kind of prepare. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant that's being made today with you through my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of me. So whenever we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember and proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus until he comes again. In a moment, we'll take these together. First, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So you can take your wafer. The body of Christ given for you. And now receive the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are a good, good God. We thank you that nothing catches you by surprise. We thank you that you can redeem anything that happens in our world and in our lives. And Lord, as Pastor Greg prayed, we pray that you would call us into deeper relationship with you, that this intimacy that communion offers us would just be a daily experience that we have with you where we come to you, where we unburden ourselves, where we let go of the past, where we confess our sins and our failings and ask for your strength to live the life you're calling us to live. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are faithful no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace from now until the moment that you walk into his arms. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have some uh, announcements to cover before we move into our last worship song together. First of all, you may be seated. That was announcement number one. Secondly, uh, you should have a connection card. Please take a moment to fill that out. Part of being connected to one another is knowing who's here and who's not, who's missing, but also giving the opportunity to share prayer requests or to request to find out about different opportunities for connection or different ministries or different needs. So please take a moment to fill those out if you haven't already. And uh, you can drop those. Um, at the tables where you came in, there's buckets for your offering and your connection cards uh, after we finish our last song and before we go eat. Um, secondly, there are just a couple of uh, corporate or community prayer announcements. Paul Hansen, Paul and Brenda, you know, uh, Paul attends in a wheelchair uh, often. He has been in the VA hospital uh, for some breathing issues and has been there for a, about a week now, I think. And so we're lifting them up in prayer for full functioning of his lungs, restoring of his strength. And then for Reese Erickson, again, uh, one of the twins that were born co-joined. The uh, Remy is home, as you know, but Reese continues to struggle at Children's Hospital in uh, Minneapolis. So we want to lift up both of those today. Would you just pray with me? Lord, we know you're a healer. We know you're the giver and author of life. We know that you're the great physician. We know that you know exactly what's going on in each of these situations. We pray for clarity of Paul's lungs. We pray for a renewal of strength. We pray that the medical team taking care of him would be able to know and see and do exactly what they need to do to participate with you in his healing. We pray for Brenda and Victoria as they seek to support uh, and walk through these times with Paul. We pray also for the Erickson family. We pray that you would bless them. We pray in faith just a hedge of protection around little Reese. We pray for full functioning of her heart and her lungs and any other body system that has been underdeveloped. We pray that you would strengthen it, Lord. We pray for the medical team that you'd help them to know exactly what to do. We pray for endurance and encouragement for this family. 
as they seek to continue on caring for other kids and, and work and all those things while also being uh, a part of Reese's journey. So we lift up and ask for healing in these situations. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of other announcements. Next Sunday, we'll be meeting back indoors again. And it is also uh, Andrew's final Sunday with us. And so we are, yeah, the music stops then because <laughs> it is a sad, sad day. It is a sad day. But we are celebrating with Andrew his continued call to ministry as he uh, moves to a church in Maple Grove, closer to home. And, um, and we will have a reception for Andrew after that service. Also, after that, at 1 p.m., we are going to do uh, baptism again, full immersion baptism in the Mississippi River over at Otsego Riverside Park. And we have some people that have uh, signed up for that. They're desiring to do that. If any of you, if the Lord's putting that on your heart, please talk to me today. I'm helping to coordinate that. So, um, or people online, you can email Darcy this week and let her know. We'd like to know that in advance so we can prepare and also have conversation before we do that. Um, so uh, that'll be an exciting time, and I've ordered weather that is at least this good for next, <laughs> because I'm going to be in the water, and, you know, it's a selfish prayer, really. But, <laughs> um, And then September is small group sign-up month. That doesn't mean they're all beginning. Some of them are beginning, but most of them will begin in October. And uh, as Pastor shared, again, seek connection this fall. So what does that mean? There's several... Uh, there's a table over there, adult ministry table with several small groups laid out. There's women's only groups, men's only groups. There's even a group that Colleen and Pastor Greg are hosting that is going to meet via Zoom. So for people that just aren't comfortable gathering in close quarters with other people, that will be an option as well. Um, and Cindy and I are going to lead a marriage and family small group for, uh, for couples with children. And so we invite you to be any part of any of those, but also a small group can be just you grabbing another couple or another friend and meeting together. And we want to help facilitate that any way we can. So there are sheets back there that are blank sheets where you can grab your own and form your own small group and just kind of let us know what's happening, who's it for, whether you're open to other people being a part of it. We can post that online. Um, and we can give you resources and support for that. We've got tons of resources on all sorts of topics, books of the Bible, uh, men's issues, women's issues, marriage issues, parenting issues, all kinds of issues So or topics. So um, we can help you or you can find your own. But no matter what, just uh, be a part of a small group is our encouragement. And then um, there's also ministry booths for registration for Sunday school, youth ministry, sign-ups. And if you haven't registered your kids yet, please do so, so that we can plan for them and put them in small groups. And then, um, as mentioned, you can drop the offering and your Connect card in the buckets on the way out. There's also trash cans where you can deposit the remnants of your communion cups. And uh, Andrew informed me that the website temporarily is down for maintenance. And I know more and more people are doing online giving. So if you normally give by going to the website and clicking give, that won't work today. But you can do it even easier by texting on your phone. CCO give is what you're texting to 77977. And it gives you a link, a secure and safe and encrypted link that allows you to give online uh, if you want to do it that way. Again, that's text CCO give to 77977. Um, and then as after our final song, we, as you've probably seen, we have tables set up over there. You can certainly have your chairs out to eat. We have a food line that'll start over there. Hot dogs, chips, um, a cookie, and fresh roasted corn. Um, and so people will be behind the table 
serving you up on those things, and uh, it'll be self-explanatory when you go over. And then we'll have some kids' games out here on the lawn as well happening. So uh, let's just say one more prayer, blessing for our food. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thanks for clearing up the weather, for the warmth of the sun, and the truth of your son, Lord, and the love of your son in our hearts. We ask your blessing upon this food and our bodies to your service. In Jesus' name, amen.